Okay, in the last video, we were striving to find a reduction formula for this integral here, and we were close. We had m plus n times this integral was equal to this, which is our uv term, and then we had this integral. At the very last part of the video, we forgot to write the coefficient for that integral. So let's finish this off and then discuss an application of it. Um, here we're going to have the integral of sine of x cosine x to the n dx will equal minus this quantity. And here we have m minus 1x cosine n plus 1x divided by m plus n plus m minus 1 divided by m plus n. And now in this integral, the sine of x is reduced in power. And this one stays the same. But it is a reduction formula in the sense that here, here we have the sine of x to the m power. Now this is not down by 2. Uh, now let's remember though how we got to this point. We began with this integral here and we rewrote it like this. We said sine m minus 1x times the cosine of x to the n power times the sine of x dx. And then once we did that, that was designated u, and this became dv. That is how it was set up. But we didn't have to do it that way. We could have just as easily rewrote it like this. Sine to the mx cosine to the n minus 1x times the cosine of x dx. And then this would have been designated as u, and this would be dv. And if you work with this integral and go through the same process as we did for this integral, you end up with this kind of a reduction formula. Back to our original integral here. And now, this was the uv term here, and in this case it is, we still have the minus sign, and then now we have the sine of x is to the m plus 1, and the cosine of x is to the n minus 1 divided by m plus n. And we're going, we end up with now n minus 1 divided by m plus n. And here, this stays to the same power. And now it's the cosine of x that gets reduced in power. So two different reduction formulas depending upon how you go about it. Um, what we want to say at this point is if we have this integral here with these limits so 
sine to the mx cosine to the nx dx now going back here to this reduction formula this would have limits going from 0 to pi over 2 this of course will also but let's see if x is 0 then the sine of x is 0 if x is pi over 2 and the cosine of x is 0 so this term drops out and also same thing for this reduction formula so like for example from the top expression we would say this is equal to m minus 1 over m plus n 0 to pi over 2 sine of x to the m minus 2 cosine to the nx dx okay we have a way of abbreviating this kind of formula or this kind of integral it is just simply I M N so when you see that written I M N that means we're integrating the sine of X times the cosine of X the sine is to the M power the cosine is to the N power and we have these limits on it so let's see then how we can write our reduction formula in abbreviated form. Here we have IMN and there are two reduction formulas for it. One from here and one from here. So there's IMN and we're going to have a reduction formula from here that is M minus 1 over m plus n and then this integral right here goes from 0 to pi over 2 so we abbreviate that as i m minus 2 n and then from this one we would have n minus 1 over m plus n. This goes from 0 to pi over 2 now and we have m n minus 2. And this right here, this reduction formula that we finally got to, this is very important in the study of beta integral functions. So we want to get it out of the way here and when we return to beta integral functions, we'll make use of this reduction formula here, both forms of it. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, we're going to try and post some videos uh, concerning how to solve integral problems using partial fractions. So come back and join us for those, and we'll see if we can get back on track and try to solve some more problems.